Good morning. I've said good morning to most of you already today. But welcome to worship. And for those of you who were able to come to the congregational meeting, thank you for attending this morning. We don't have a lot of specials this month. We're going to do a fellowship reception on Sunday the 13th, the day before Valentine's Day. That will be hopefully out on the patio where we had planned to be this morning, except driving in I had rain uh, coming in on Gulf Links and 22nd Street. So we decided inside we were probably better for today. Uh, but we will try to be out on the patio after service with a dessert and coffee and hot chocolate um, and maybe some punch, though with the weather the way it's been, maybe punch is not the best thing to do because it's a little on the chilly side. So keep that in mind for the 13th, folks, and we'll, we'll have some fellowship time after service that day. Uh, you know what the regular collections are, and everything's running behind me. So um, the, the biggie for us at our house is that one of our boys is turning 16 in two weeks. Uh, it seems almost impossible um, that Josiah will be 16. But um, I guess life is moving faster and faster and faster in our uh, home. Uh, we have, there are, there are a number of birthdays. It looks to me like Vanessa shares a birthday with our Josiah. So um, we'll have to be sure we sing happy birthday to both of them. Sarah uh, Barrett has a birthday coming up, Barrett Wright. Um, and some of, some of Sharon's grandchildren and great grand it is great grandchildren, isn't it, Sharon? Yeah. Maya's a great granddaughter. And Denise has a, a grandson. Oren has a birthday coming up uh, at the end of February. Um, we did get another volunteer to help with communion, so that means at this point we have three people uh, getting communion ready and hopefully cleaning up afterwards, too. Um, Remember that if you want fair trade items for Easter, you can order them and find a link on the church website uh, to do that. I haven't seen an Easter catalog come through yet, but I would assume it will be pretty quickly. Yeah, I think the only one I got was like winter clearance. Yeah, that's what we got at our home too. And Living Lutheran money is due. If you want the Living Lutheran delivered to your home, that's the Lutheran magazine, the Lutheran standard, you probably know all the predecessor names of the Lutheran magazines. Um, it is now called Living Lutheran. Um, it is an excellent magazine from the national church level. It really does help to keep us in touch with what's going on in the larger church and in ecumenical partnerships and in the church at large uh, around the world. So please keep those things in mind. I, I would remind you that in the South Pacific, the nation of Tonga has been devastated. Um, I have not yet seen from the ELCA that they are forwarding money and resources to Tonga, but I would be very surprised if they are not. Uh, probably through a church relationship with a non-Lutheran body that's there. Um, and you can make gifts designated for that purpose to the national church if that touches your heart. Um, that nation was devastated by an undersea volcano uh, that scientists believe was 100 times bigger than the bomb we dropped on Hiroshima back at the end of World War II. Um, a lot of damage, a lot of natural damage in the ocean and on the islands of Tonga. Tonga is made up of a whole bunch of archipelago islands. Um, so please keep that nation in your prayers. And we can all give thanks to God that it wasn't above ground when it went off. Because the water really helped to restrain the power uh, that that volcano erupted with. Um, 
I'm, I'm assuming you're all praying for the men and women's basketball team at the university every night. Um, they, it's been pretty, I ain't never watched basketball before. I've been watching uh, them and of course, the other important team that is around us is the Phoenix Suns. There is some Minnesota team named after some dog. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> the Timberwolves. So um, just remember that a lot of activity is going on right now. The gym show is, is moving forward uh, in the community and it's a good opportunity to go and be outside um, and to see the kinds of things that are available uh, through collectors and people who do mining and geology things around the world. So um, that's an opportunity for an outing that's pretty safe if you watch your distancing. So please keep that in mind. Oh, Living Luther is $10, by the way. Um, and we usually have three copies here. They're on that first pillar in the narthex. Um, and made available for members of the congregation to be borrowed uh, and, and read by members of the congregation who do not want to order or cannot order a subscription to the Living Lutheran. So please keep that in mind. Do you still get yours at home, Ron? Yeah, yeah, we get, we get ours mailed here instead of at home. And I will tell you, I sit down and read through it to make sure I'm not in the obituaries every month. Um, I have, have had some surprises of people who are there who I know, um, whose lives have ended and they've become God's triumphant saints. And I think that's probably it for our announcements today. We'll continue now with the order for confession and forgiveness. It's available on the screen behind me or on page 94 of the Red Hymnal.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We continue now with Kyrie, found on page 184. It 
It's not irritable, irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part that we will. We prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. And became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see a mirror, dimly, but then we see face to face. Now I know only in part that I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three are the greatest of this is love. This ends the second reading. <laughs> Scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do here also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them, except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet, prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Holy Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
There's some very interesting lessons today. On one hand, we have Paul talking to us about the greatest gift of all, which is love. And, and by the way, that's the answer to my sermon question. What is it that we are called to? What is it that God hopes will be a part of our lives? And, and it is the kind of love that God offered to his children through Jesus Christ. The gift of love which offers a sacrifice, a humbling in obedience to God. The kind of love which comes into the lives of people with compassion and gentleness and caring. That's the kind of love that Paul is talking about that is the greatest of the gifts. It also is not always the easiest of the gifts. There are plenty of circumstances where we would rather not love. And in our gospel today, I find it very interesting that Jesus, when everybody is praising him, all of a sudden puts himself at odds with the people who are speaking well of him and all that he's done. Now, if you remember when we spoke of the wedding at Cana in Galilee in the Gospel of John, we talked about the fact that you could see Cana from Nazareth. Nazareth was on a hill, maybe a maybe even on a cliff or a precipice of some kind, and you could look down the valley or down land to the community of Cana. And evidently they were very close because people knew each other in both places. So here we have Jesus, and even though this gospel does not name it in this reading, he's in Nazareth. He has gone back to the community where he was raised. He has gone back to tell them God's truth for their lives. And yes, he speaks, he speaks God's truth in all of its gentleness and kindness and, and grace in such a way that everybody thinks he is really very special and wonderful until he challenges them. He challenges the light-hearted faith that they lived with in Nazareth, the pride that they had in the fact that Jesus, the miracle worker, the really good preacher, came from them. He was a member of their community. So in the midst of this reading from Luke, we also have the fact that there is an overarching problem with pride. God's love and pride don't go together. If we come, if we come before God, and we all will, and God says to us, you had a lot of pride in the things you did as my child on earth, didn't you? And our answer should be what? Yeah, Holly got it right. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It happens in our giving. It happens in our service on behalf of the gospel in the community. It happens in our interpersonal relationships. When we think about God, somehow we almost automatically go to the fact that there must be some way that I can earn God's good grace in my life. Perhaps in Luke, it was the people of Nazareth thinking, you know, if we speak well of him, maybe he'll do some of those miracles here for us. Maybe he'll turn straw into gold. Oh, there's a familiar tale. Doesn't work. And then Jesus says it, you know, when Elijah was a prophet to you, and there was a great famine, God did not send him 
to you. Instead, he sent him to the widow in Zarephath in Sidon. And he provided for her. She had very little, and, and Elijah created this miracle of provision that outlasted the famine for this widow and her son. I hope we're all kind of familiar with that story. She had a little oil and a little measure of grain, and it was enough. Or when Elisha, who follows Elijah, asks for a gift from Elijah of wisdom. And it's Elisha who cleanses Naaman. It isn't him going to the people of Israel or Judah or Jerusalem to cleanse those people of their illnesses. It, he is sent to a foreigner, a Syrian. Now, if you want to wonder why there are historic problems between Jews and Syrians, there it is, folks. It's written right there. And so now these people who spoke so well about Jesus, what do they want to do with him? They want to give him the bird's eye view of Cana by casting him off the cliff. Now, they in all likelihood attended the wedding at Cana in Galilee, all of these people, or many of them. They understood what Jesus did in Cana, that he took regular water and turned it into the finest wine. And, you know, it doesn't matter if we say, well, it doesn't say that everybody knew. I got news for you. Everybody knew. That kind of a secret you don't keep in, a com in small communities of people. My goodness, in little towns, they know who stubbed their toe on the vacuum cleaner the night before and said three really bad words. They know everything about one another, including this son of Joseph. So in our world of faith and belief in Christ, accepting God's only Son as our Savior, we are called to live in humble faith with what we do knowing that we are not earning something, but instead we are humbling ourselves, our time, our talent, and our resources before God. And in that humility, we come to share in ways that are much greater than we might not have shared if we had pride in them. All you have to do is think about the Wildcats and they're getting stomped by a team they never expected to lose to. Or the game with ASU yesterday where they could hardly make a basket but they still beat them. It's easy for us to be brought down. And being brought down in our pride is one of the things that happens for us. Because pride is not the bearer of God's grace. It is humility and obedience. It is a willing heart and mind that bear God's grace and love into the world. And that's what you and I are meant to do. We're meant to live in this world in a different way. I'm still struggling, by the way, with how I deal with the people who go by me at 100 miles an hour on golf links, racing between cars and zipping back and forth across three lanes. I'm still trying to deal with how I handle that as a Christian because it makes me just darn angry. So what is the loving act. Well, the other day, I was driving in to get the boys at school, and traffic started to back up from about 
the turn on the 22nd to head east on Gulf on aviation all the way back to Country Club, and I'm going, traffic never is slow through here. So something must have happened. The police car went by on the, on the um, side of the, the road, and another one went by, and as we pulled up, there was a um, Datsun 280Z with a teenager sitting on the concrete wall and the car, a convertible, lying upside down on the pavement. No other cars, no one else involved. He had his phone out. How would you like to make that call to your dad? And I thought, this is the outcome of making choices and decisions about how little you value your own life or the lives of other people around you. But what did that young man need? Did he need me to judge him? Don't you suppose he understood that what he was doing was the cause of this accident? What he needed was somebody to stop and ask what? Do you need help? Are you okay? Can I do anything for you? What happened to him was extremely frightening. Evidently, the car careened off of both concrete walls before it flipped upside down. You see what a struggle it is for us to really be the bearers of God's grace and love in the world. Because we don't think at that time, what I wanted to think and did think was, you got what you had coming. But did he? If that's my attitude, what happens to all of us? If that's my theology, you get what you got coming, where does that put us? I mean, after all, that's why Christ was sent. So that we don't get exactly what we have coming. Because in Christ, we are forgiven for those things. Our biggest struggle as the people of the church is to forgive other people for the mistakes and choices they make. And that's not an easy thing for us to do. We live in a culture that tells us the other way is better. But in the church, we live in the culture of Jesus Christ, who says, my grace is more than enough for you. My forgiveness and love covers over every brokenness in your life. And I call you to be God's children and to live with faith, hope, and love in your life. But the greatest of these gifts, if your faith is a little shaky or your hope is a little odd, is love. We are called to love all people in the same way and by the same nature as Jesus Christ loves us. May that fill the rest of our journey in this season after Epiphany. And we're going to know by doing that. We're going to know when we get to Lent why we need Lent. Why we need to take that journey toward darkness. It is because too often we fail to love in Christ's way. With the help of Christ's Spirit, we can do it. And sometimes we get it exactly right. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.
Let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He descended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray now for the whole <clears throat> excuse me. Let us pray now for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, for all people according to their need, for God's church, and for all of God's creation. Gracious Lord, your spirit walks in with and around us every day. She is the gift of Jesus Christ for our journey in life. Help us to listen to the Spirit's guidance and wisdom. Help us to be the words of gentle kindness when that is the last thing we want to do. Help us to be understanding and compassionate. Help us to turn to you for help when we find ourselves acting and speaking in ways which are not Christ-like. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Lord, uh, we pray for Sharon's friend, Bobby, and we pray for Bobby's daughter-in-law, her husband, Jody's husband lost, his life to a person who had lived with them for many years who they had decided needed to move. And he came back into their home, killing jo uh, Bobby's son and wounding Jody. We pray for Bobby on this loss and for our whole community that such violence gets perpetrated against other people who we know. Sometimes we are the ones against whom it is perpetrated. Help us in the face of the brokenness of the world to live with gentleness and kindness, with faith and the greatest of all hope and love. Grant us the means every day to be your children in bigger and bigger and better ways. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Lord, we pray that you will hold up the gift of the resurrection for Bobby and for Joni. That as you heal them, as you live with them in the midst of their grief and loss and offer that sense of hope, through your gentle kindness and gift of Jesus Christ, that you will help them to move their lives forward. Oh, their lives will be greatly changed, Lord. But with you in, with, and around them, they will be able to move forward, carrying with them uh, their grief and loss and the horror of the day, but knowing in you, all things are possible. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Lord, we pray for uh, Dave Beecham today. It's pretty easy for us to understand that Dave probably isn't feeling well because he's here every Sunday with all of the effort that it takes for him to be ready to get his chair loaded in his van and to drive him to church and to be here with us. But he's got a, what he thinks is a chest cold and bronchitis. We pray that that's all it is, Lord. 
and we pray that they get some care so that uh, he can be certain about what he's dealing with. And we pray for your healing for him. We add to him uh, Kelly Krieg and Patience Rios, Joanna's daughter, and the Rios family, all of whom have COVID-19 again. We pray that you'll keep Joanna healthy as the caregiver in their home. And that you'll be with Letitia, who got exposed to patients after patients came home from her dad's visit. And we pray for quick healing and fullness of health. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Lord, we pray for Jim and Janet Welch, Jim Blair's cousins, for their continued healing. We pray for... Um, just a minute. Oh, Janet, I'm sorry. For Jim's sister, Janet, for continued healing. And we pray for Jim that as he continues to deal with the issue of kidney stones, that you will rest your hand on him to break those stones up so they can get past. And that you'll be working constantly to perform your miracle of more light in his eye. And that you'll be with Jim now as he heads to a gastroenterologist because he's having digestive issues. Keep Jim in your special care and bring him fullness of health again. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Lord, we pray for Dave Beecham's sister-in-law, Lori, as she continues her journey in grief and hope. We pray for David's cousin, Candace, for continued healing, and Jerry Morris as well. We thank you for the presence of the Prasics in our congregation and in our lives, that you might surround them with your protection and give them your daily care. And we pray for Candace and Lisa and Alexis. Um, Candace and Alexis have health situations which require a lot of care by Lisa. And she has devoted herself to Candace and Alexis to make sure they can get through the days of, of poor health that they do have and experience. And we pray, too, for Terry Pina, uh, Dave's friend, his barber, as she deals with uh, knee issues from an injury. We pray for healing for her, too. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. Gracious Lord, we pray for our good friend Linda McMaster in Ann Arbor, as she now lives uh, temp what we hope will be temporarily in assisted living with therapy that she will regain strength, that you will grow her faith and restore her hope and help her to know the love of the people that have come to know her in her life. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. Gracious Lord, we, we pray for our um, nephew, Mark, uh, who has severe alcohol issues. He's in care trying to recover from nearly dying from alcohol poisoning. We pray that you'll give him the courage and strength to take one step at a time uh, throughout every day with you at his side, keeping him safe from his addiction. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Okay, one more here. Gracious Lord, all these things we pray in the name of your Son and our Lord and Savior, who through his words uh, and the prophets and the teachers and preachers like Paul has helped us to understand the power of his love and his call on our lives to be the bearer of that love. Be with us always, helping us to grow better and better each day at that work. We offer this prayer in the name of your Son. Amen.
May the peace of the Lord be with you. And also, also with, with you. you. Please appropriately greet one another with the peace of the Lord. Let's prepare our hearts and minds to receive the sacrament of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, we have the option of individual cups of wine, juice if that's been requested in advance, and communion by wafers. Um, we've used safety precautions in setting the communion, um, and we invite you to sanitize your hands when you come forward so that there is no risk of, of transferring anything of the virus between uh, you and people around you who are receiving communion. Go ahead, Sharon, and uncover the sacraments. There we go. Okay. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please come and receive the sacrament of our Lord.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Getting this open, you can practice your Spanish.